Hey, this is Ari, and in this video, I want to share with you a little clip from one of my recent interviews with Dr. Mercola, who is a good friend of mine, who is also somewhat of a childhood idol of mine. I've been following his work since I was a teenager, since I was 16 or 17 years old, over 20 years ago. And uh, I highly recommend it. This was a power packed interview and you'll see why in this little clip. And if you want to listen to the full length interview, which I highly recommend, uh, the link for that is down in the description below. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Got it. So is, in, the, in the case of somebody who is a car burner, maybe they are metabolically inflexible. Can they just take these exogenous ketone esters? Could, and it would work, get, yeah. Get a that, lot that, of these that, benefits? Right, yeah. So that, that's a, it's not ideal. And you won't get, you won't get a, a level of five. You might go up to one, maybe one and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, but because if you have the metabolic machinery already in place where your body knows what to do with these molecules and, and augment it naturally, you'll get a better effect. And the higher the level of ketones, the better you're going to be able to uh, counteract this oxidative stress, Got which it. is intermittent, and especially like your three, how many 3D combined CTs are you going to have in your life? Not many, you know, so this is not something, this is not a strategy you're doing every day, certainly, or even a few times a year, maybe that's it. But anytime you're flying would be another time to consider it. Or if you had an elective CT scan, which could be, the, the CT cone beam is not that, I mean, it's definitely a lot, but it's not anywhere like a regular CT, which is could, clearly increases your cancer risk, no question. Gotcha. So just to connect the dots again with, with COVID-19, you're saying this would likely decrease the likelihood of, of a high oxidative stress and, and the likelihood of a, a cytokine storm happening? Yeah, interestingly, I could send you a video if you want. The uh, person who makes ketonate sent me this video, the COVID-19 patient who was uh, having great shortness of breath and difficulties and took, I think she, she was clearly metabolically inflexible, had, uh, was overweight and insulin resistant and having a great difficulty talking and thinking, speaking, takes the, takes the, 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 the ketone esters and bang, she starts, she's like wakes up before your very eyes, like in two minutes, it's like crazy. So it's not, it's, it's a bandaid. It's not the, the treating the foundational cause, but you know, it's a difference between life and death many times. So mm -hmm. it can have a great radical benefit for you. Gotcha. Um, related to this is NAD plus. I know mm -hmm. that in your EMF book, uh, you, you talked about NAD plus and you mentioned uh, also niacin, which uh, I found interesting because a lot of people, most people who are talking about NAD plus are talking specifically about nicotinamide riboside and mm -hmm. nicotinamide mononucleotide, NR, NMN as being sort of the things you need to boost um, to boost NAD plus and much less known is that there's already quite a bit of research showing that plain old niacin cheap cheap niacin and niacinamide also boost levels of NAD plus very significantly I'm, I'm just curious what's what's your thoughts on that landscape why didn't you why, why aren't you pushing NR and NMN harder and why are you saying niacin you know also works or, or works just as well if if that's accurate to say well not quite accurate but uh it's, a, it's a, happy to go there. It's a, it's a complex discussion. Yeah. Uh, NAD plus is uh, mentioned as a really important biomolecule. It's it's crucial for energy production and as as a signaling molecule between the, the mitochondria and the nucleus. Uh, and if your levels go off, which they tend to as you age, I mean that's one of the signals that you're going to age prematurely and maybe not be with us for much longer. So in, increasing your NAD plus levels is really important. Interestingly, uh, the benefit of the ketones I just mentioned works independently of NAD. So just by increasing NAD doesn't mean you're going to increase ketones. They, they're two separate mechanisms. Hmm. Although NAD will help EPH through, a, through a, a different mechanism, but it actually, I think it inhibits, I mean, this molecular hydrogen inhibits NADPH oxidase, which, which consumes the NADPH. Um, so, to answer your question, the, the NAD plus, we have about, we use about nine grams a day, 9,000 milligrams, of which about 99% gets recycled. Now, if you have a lot of EMF exposure and stress, you're going to, you're going to use, you're not going to, you're going to use more and, and not going to be able to recycle as much. So your need becomes more. So when you consume NAD, its breakdown product is niacinamide. And 
the uh, so you need some niacin. In fact, there's a disease. If you, I'm sure you've heard of pellagra before. Mm-hmm. It's a disease pretty much in the 20th century, and you get uh, dermatitis, uh, dementia, diarrhea, and then the fourth the, the fourth D, which is death, killed a lot of people. And it usually it's considered to be a vitamin B3 or niacin deficiency, but it's not. You know what's a deficiency of? Niacinamide. No. And NAD, NAD plus. Okay. NAD plus, yeah. It, but because when you give them NAD, I mean, or niacin or niacinamide, each, either would work. Uh, then your body has the precursor to reconstruct the NAD. That's what it normally does. You you recycle when you when you consume it, you break it down to niacinamide, and your body recon, reconstitute it nat- naturally. You don't mm-hmm. have to take these precursors. But if you're not getting enough niacin, because you you have like about a hundred milligram deficit per day or somewhere in that range, maybe 50 milligrams, depends on your height, weight, and some other variables. So normally you need about 25 to 50 milligrams of niacin a day or vitamin B3 to compensate for that. Now there's a lot of people on time, Abram Hoffer is an MD psychiatrist who's no longer with us, was a popular user of high doses of niacin therapy. He primarily used it for schizophrenia, but he used it for other, other therapies. And interestingly, NA, the first published paper on NAD+, plus, not niacin, but NAD+, plus, you know what year it was published? Clinical in the United States. No idea. 1961. 61. Wow. wow. You know, that is 40, 50, 60, almost 60 years. It took a years. long time to gain popularity. It was only in like yeah. 2018. Yeah, I know, I know. Well we, well, we didn't really get it until... Um, Sinclair figured it out really because you're right. But we, everyone studied this for the last century or so. And if you've ever taken biochemistry, we all, we all knew what NAD was. No one understood the importance of it. But then Sinclair was at MAT at the time with Lenny Garardi's lab, uh, who was doing research on resveratrol and, and, and studying the sirtuins with their longevity proteins and found that the sir, sirtuins would not work, specifically CERT1, unless they had NAD. And he said, Whoa, this is really important. So that's when it started getting, that was late 20th century, 1999, 2000. Uh, and then they gained prominence at that time. And then they've done a lot of other work since then. So anyway, the num- number of people, are, you know, and actually Sinclair himself is now popularizing NMN, which mm-hmm. he uses personally. And then there's others, NR, nicotinamide riboside. Uh, so that will convert to NAD+. Uh, the problem with those, though, is that most pe- most of these precursors We'll start the precursors first, and we'll go back to niacin. The precursors are um, oral. They're almost all given orally. And the problem with an oral precursor is that you're, you have to absorb it from your, blood, from your gut into your blood. And the process of doing that, it bypasses, it goes through your liver. And the liver perceives it as a foreign molecule, so it tries to detoxify it. And the process, it methylates it and, and essentially changes it to a different molecule, which is, doesn't work. So you get high, yeah, I'm, I'm, your, your liver gets high levels of NAD, but not the rest of the tissues in your body. Got, got it. I, I've actually also read um, some reports, for example, uh, Neurohacker Collective. They yeah, I know those guys. Yeah. They, they've, they've published some research saying that um, a large percentage of the NR and NMN that get taken in orally actually get converted in the gut to niacinamide before they even get absorbed into the blood. Yeah, there's that component too, but I think the yeah. bigger issue is just to convert into the liver. Got it. You know? So you're not, you, you want it to, to be floating in the blood systemically and be absorbed through all of your cells throughout your body into the cells and being converted to NAD+, which doesn't happen very effectively. So you can do it. You, there is some benefit, but you have to understand too in these studies. And first of all, it's really, really difficult actually beyond difficult. There's only a few labs in the world that can measure NAD+. There's only a few, a handful. So most of these people, unless they're a research lab, they're not, they're, I don't know where they're coming up with these numbers and start showing it works because you, it's almost impossible to measure this stuff. I mean, it's a very difficult, sophisticated assay. Uh, so, you know, that's part of the reason why it's so hard to get data on this. Uh, so anyway, th- th- that, th- so that's why I'm not a big fan of the precursors. You can use it, people get benefit. But the, the point I was going with that tangent, but assuming, assuming they're measuring it, as I mentioned, your levels of NAD can decrease by 99% plus as you get over 60, 70 years old. So if it even doubles your NAD, which sounds impressive, right? Or even triples, quadruples, 
say you're at 0.5 and you're supposed to be at 50, mm-hmm. you're not getting into therapeutic levels. Right. You know, it's almost irrelevant. You know, and it looks good on paper, but it, it's essentially worthless. And that's what I think a lot of this, there's a lot of uh, confusion on this because they just aren't telling the whole story. Mm-hmm. So anyway, getting back to niacin and niacinamide, I think it's a, it's not, it's a good strategy. I, I'm against high doses of those. Uh, for a number of reasons, high dose niacin is actually a methyl consumer. So if you have a methyl with problem with methylation, you're going to be an issue. You can come, somewhat compensate for that by taking methyl donors like trimethylglycine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I take a lot of that. I like trimethylglycine. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty inexpensive, safe supplement. Sweet, it's a good sweetener. So, um, but but that's a concern. So I don't like do- the the more significant sir, concern. This is what actually uh, Sinclair figured out in his work with sirtuins, is that the niacinamide is actually a negative inhibitor of CERT1 at, at higher levels. So if you get high levels of niacinamide, you're taking a gram, two grams, three grams of niacinamide because it's non-flushing niacin, thinking you're doing yourself body a good thing. You're actually inhibiting your CERT, sirtuins. Mm. Not a good strategy. Mm. Not a good strategy in any way, shape, or form. Now, if you're taking 25, 50 milligrams, I don't think it's going to do much. Mm-hmm. But so it probably doesn't matter. But when you start getting into gram quantities, I would be very, very concerned about that. So I think 25, 50 milligrams of niacin, most people, it's not going to cause a flush, would be fine. If you want to do niacinamide, that would be fine too. But I think the key is to do these other strategies, like the exercise. These, the blood flow restriction therapy blows it through the roof. Hey, this is Ari. I hope you enjoyed this video. And one more thing before you go, actually two more things. One is if you enjoyed this particular little clip, uh, the link to the full length podcast is in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Also, one more thing. Let me ask you a question. What if I could show you how to double your energy levels and dramatically improve your brain function, reducing your anxiety and depression to a degree on par with antidepressant drugs, but without the side effects. Sound pretty interesting? Well, there are in fact numerous compounds that can do this, that have been shown to do this. And I'll I'll take you through just a few of these very briefly. One of them is rhodiola rosea. And this has been shown in studies, uh, rhodiola rosea extract, in people with stress-related fatigue and exhaustion to cut their levels of fatigue and brain fog in half in less than a month. Just this one compound. There's another compound uh, in my formula Energenesis called NT factor phospholipids that's been shown to help repair mitochondrial membranes and mitochondrial health to the level of healthy 29-year-olds taking people with deteriorated mitochondria who are over the age of 65, restoring it to the level of healthy 29 year olds. Um, And that has been shown in numerous studies in various types of chronic fatigue, aging associated chronic fatigue, obesity related chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, to increase energy levels by 30 to 45% in the span of four to 12 weeks, depending on the specific study. So dramatic improvements in a very, very short period of time. Uh, Two more compounds that are amazing, I highly recommend, that are in my formula, Ultra Brain, along with Rhodiola rosea. Saffron extract. This has been shown to increase levels of, um, improve your mood, I should say, and decrease levels of depression on par with fluoxetine, which is Prozac. And uh, not only that, but with fewer side effects. It's much safer and much less likely to cause negative effects than antidepressant drugs are. Acetyl-L-carnitine is another compound that's been shown to dramatically improve brain health in older adults. It also improve energy levels in older adults with chronic fatigue by between 40 to 50% in just the span of two to to four months. And Uh, The last thing I'll mention here is acetyl-L-carnitine has also been compared to antidepressant drugs and been shown, like saffron, to be as effective as antidepressant drugs in combating depression, but without the harmful side effects that so often occur with the drugs. So this is just a small uh, sampling of the over 35 compounds that are in my formulas, Energenesis, 
and UltraBrain that are all proven to dramatically improve energy levels, mitochondrial health and brain health and much, much more. Uh, and I highly recommend that you go check these out. If you're struggling with depression or anxiety or brain fog, if you're struggling with stress-related ex exhaustion and burnout, if you're struggling with chronic fatigue, go check out these formulas, give them a shot. I promise you are gonna be blown away by the results. And like I said, the science has already proven that these things work. So you don't have to just take my word for it. Uh, there's lots of research to support that. And I'll even link to some of that research down below so you can verify everything that I just said for yourself. So the links to those studies will be in the description for this video uh, down below. So check them out. Uh, check out the formulas on the energyblueprint.com. Again, uh, Energenesis is the mitochondrial formula and Ultra Brain is our brain formula. Check them out, try them out, and I think you're going to be blown away by the results. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again soon.